we're always one thing about black communities we're never going to stay quiet forever it's just like we're always going to come back but it's just the fact now we got to come back in different ways like we're seeing stuff differently now mm -hmm. so each time like every every time a a black uh woman black male goes through something they don't come they come back as a different person like they maybe they hit ground bottom but yet they come back as a different person and that's just what the community is going to do is come back as a whole different not it's the same community but come back with different ways of seeing stuff mm -hmm. and so like we all after the street checks was all over we all came back and seeing the police differently now mm -hmm. and that's just what it's going to do for us with the the virus like in the the pm it's just going to make us see stuff differently now because we know we have to pay attention to all these kind of things like before none of us really probably paid attention to it we probably had elders trying to say hey like open your eyes look at this pay attention to this but now it's just like we actually listen to what's going on now because we know that we are targeted and we are the main target out there that they want us to either be in prison or or, or washed away can't lock us up now though no, hey. <laughs> Get locked up now. <laughs> hey, I, I hope not. Yeah, right for now. Not. Until until like again, like the possibilities of how this is gonna look and impact life for marginalized communities is yeah. is literally endless. We've seen the government come up with eighty two billion dollars to help people out. And it's like if you can do that and people don't and and then also give directives to have access to clean water and then not give access to clean water. Like there's so many, like you can do anything. Like you're yeah, the, gov the government can do it. The government can do it all. You can give $2,000 now for everyone. No one's working. No one got that. So you can give a 2000. The government has all the money. Our money that we spend just goes back into their pocket. It's just all big circles. It's going in a circle, all the money. So it's, I don't want to hear no excuses from government. If you can come up with all this ways to give up money, give up food and all that stuff for, because the, the coronavirus, you can you should be able to do that for marginalized communities immigrants and all that kind of stuff like you shouldn't everyone like i noticed that everyone is now like worried because it's affecting all mm -hmm. but imagine imagine if this was just in the black community do you think this would be blowing up on the news like it all is right now do you think this would be like do you think the money would be given up to the black community like it is right now to everyone else like no that, that wouldn't be happening and that's something like we need to fix we all got to start realizing that everyone matters not just like not just because the whole world is affected right now like later on what if like another something else happened in another community you got to pay attention how that community it's we all we are all people we are all human we all bleed no one is made of metal no one is made of like no one is unstoppable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we all got to be together mm -hmm. together like we can't be isolated or separated because that just causes disaster like it is right now mm -hmm. have you um you kind of touched on that a bit there but yeah i've been thinking about sort of marginalized and active communities who've been shouting for years for support financial support financial <laughs> and then um just sort of like all of a sudden there's this thing that can that that having money and power doesn't protect you from it um and we are changing the world in response and can you um have you been thinking about that what are your thoughts on, on that kind of idea yeah i mean like there are so many instances in which case the government obviously could have access to the money to to provide folks with the things that they need but just they choose not to you know what I mean? It's a choice. And I say that all the time. Government's a choice. We're like, yeah. oh, we hate, we hate the way government runs. Yeah, somebody makes those choices. Like, there's somebody who makes those choices. We can make, we make choices every single day as individual people. And we know whether or not we're going left or whether or not we're going right. We know whether or not that feels good for us and what the motivation is behind that choice. And people in government have, we have unlimited minutes now. Um, and people in the government... Yeah, and people in the government make choices too. And they know whether that's motivated by money or keeping people alive or safety precautions or meeting quotas. Like folks, like you know what you're, I refuse to believe that people have no concept of what's going on and just make these random decisions with no education and no information. That's ridiculous. I don't believe them. 
And I've said, and Trey's been there, and we've said this millions of times in rooms with tons of politicians. <laughs> like we are, I, we are yeah. groups of, we are a group of smart people. Yeah. Why can't we come up with a solution that works for more people? That like thinks of all of us, that includes the most marginalized voices. Like why is that so hard? Because people don't want to. It's like the politics, like, as Kate just said, we've been to the table with a bunch of politics and it's just like, they don't want us. They don't want people on the inside of the actual problem, making the, coming up with the, with the solutions, like coming up with the, the ways to fix it because they know we'll actually fix the problem. They want to keep like street checks been going on for more than 20 years. And it's just, they just now started like, just now started to let us in a little bit. And they see it, it, it fixed, but then they were like, nah, we don't like this. Let's, let's cause something else. Let's do something else. And that's when it went to brutality. They don't want the people who are really facing the problems to come in and fix the problem. Yeah, they tell us that we're like not smart enough to do it, right? They're like, oh, you can't be like smart enough. You like can't have the answers. And it's like, we're actually not culturally incompetent. We're very, very culturally competent of like what a black experience. I will be able to come up with ideas and creative solutions and innovative ways because I, yeah, I'm living this experience. But people the government, Like, I just think the government just, all their choices are to impress the ones with the money so they can keep the money coming in. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. not, it's not to, to help us. It's just to keep the money flowing. And it's a numbers game, right? So it's a money numbers game, but it's a people numbers game. So if you're in a room and you're the only voice that's advocating for African Nova Scotian life and, and rights and successes, it's a vote, you're outvoted. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's another way that our government is formed. Like you are outvoted in a lot of circumstances. Mm -hmm. So that, look, we brought the person to the table. We heard the thing that they have to say. They can't do anything though. They're outvoted.